Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, the EMS's efforts in cardiac care is, is absolutely phenomenal. We've really done uh, a huge push towards improving cardiac arrest survivability as well as uh, acute myocardial infarction. Uh, and we've done that in a number of different fronts, one of them being in our response times. We have some of the lowest response times in the nation for urban EMS systems. And that has truly helped us to be able to improve our survivability rates. Uh, our average response time is about six minutes, actually a little bit less. The average response time for the across the nation is around nine minutes. And so we're a third less on our response times uh, compared to other similar systems. And that has helped us uh, improve our ability to get the patients to definitive care now, quicker. Now, the response time you're talking about is from the time the call comes in to dispatch till the time the patient's picked up. I mean, right? That's, that's where the EMT arrives at the scene. Is that the same for everybody? I mean, does everybody have that metric and, and really measure the same thing? I think that's important. No, uh, that's a real great point. As a matter of fact, um, one of the things that we've been looking at across the, the nation as an industry is how do we standardize the way that we track data? Um, and one of those issues is in response time. At the medical center, we wanted to make sure that we were as hard on ourselves as possible because that's how, that's how we operate. And so we look at our response times from the moment that that 911 call is picked up because that's when the person thinks that, they, that, they're, that someone's on the way. Right. And so we track from that moment to the moment that the ambulance arrives on scene. Most EMS agencies track response times from the time that the ambulance is dispatched to the time it arrives. So there could be a window of one, two, three, or four minutes while they're waiting to dispatch the ambulance, either because they're screening a call or because uh, there's not an ambulance available. One of the other things we do that's very unique in our system is that we send an ambulance right away, even before we even know what the call is. Right. As soon as we pick up the telephone in our dispatch center, they ask them, what's the address of your emergency? Once they've confirmed that, there's already an ambulance that is responding. Wheels are rolling. Huh? Wheels are rolling while they're right. still asking questions. And that's, that, great. that's made a huge difference. You know, just in terms of cardiac survivability, we also have that machine, right, that does cardiac compressions. I mean, that's unique to us also. And tell us a little bit about that. What's sure. it called? Sure. It's actually called the Lucas device. The Lucas device. Um, right. And that, to me, is one of the real great things about working for a hospital system, is knowing that a, a healthcare system is going to invest in what's best for the patient. Right. And so we have tools like the, the Lucas device, which is a mechanical CPR device that ensures perfect, high quality compressions for patients that are in cardiac arrest. Does everybody use that? No, we're, we're uh, one of the only ones in the state. We may still be the only one. I know there were a couple other hospitals that were looking at it, but the last time I checked, we were the only one still in the state that was using it. Wow, and, and this is a machine that actually does the compressions exactly right. It does it exactly right, and it's been proven to increase cardiac arrest survivability. Wow. I know we've talked about this, but our yeah. cardiac arrest survival numbers are unparalleled across the country. Really? The national average for cardiac arrest survivability is about 17%. When we started working on our response times, we were able to increase our cardiac arrest survival rate to over 30%. Wow. And now with innovations like the Lucas device, our cardiac arrest survival rate is upwards of 50%. Wow. Meaning that one out of every two patients that suffers from cardiac arrest is resuscitated in the back of a Jersey City Medical Center.